Hello church. Hello, Welcome to worship on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. It is a joy to have you all worshiping here together, even whether you are in person or virtually. So thank you for being here this morning. I have several announcements, so I suggest you buckle up. Okay. <laughs> First of all, we are going to have another hymn sing before worship on Sunday, August 14th. The date's correct, correct? Yeah. August 14th, and there are slips of paper on the table outside in the narthex, so you can feel free to use a slip of paper, write your favorite hymn down on the paper, slip it in the envelope, and uh, hopefully Deb will get it in the rotation. Speaking of August 14th, I want to start reminding you that we are going to have another ice cream social on the 14th at two o'clock at Shillington Park, pavilion number three. That's not the same pavilion we were in last year, but just look for the sweet ride ice cream truck in front of the pavilion from two to three. The ice cream has already been bought and paid for, so come on down on the 14th and join us for a time of fellowship. As I say, why would you miss this? It's free ice cream in the middle of the summer. So August 14th, 2 to 3 o'clock, please join us at the Pavilion in Shillington. Outside on the table, in addition to the papers that you can use to put your favorite hymns down, are financial statements in envelopes with your names on them. We're going to try for the next three weeks to leave them out there and invite you to look through and grab yours. Please take yours home, not someone else's. And uh, whatever is left in the end of three weeks, we will mail. We're trying to save a little money on postage because I don't know if you've looked at the price of stamps yet, but wow. So <laughs> the, state, the financial statements for six months are out sitting on the table as you leave the sanctuary. If you were here last week, I showed you that we have yard signs for you. So they have lovely sayings on them on both sides. They have our church's name and information on the bottom. And you are invited to take one home with you and to put it in your front yard. This gives you an opportunity to encourage folks to be kind and compassionate and to share some information about grace, maybe have some conversations with your neighbors. There is nothing political about these signs. This is just about the joy we all have worshiping here at Grace, and we want to share that experience with people. So the signs are in the narthex. Uh, feel free to take one home with you and stick it in your front yard. I have seen a couple around the, the, the neighborhoods, and that's kind of a joy. It's not kind of a joy. It is a joy. So they're in the narthex. I want to thank Donna Sue Thompson. Where'd she go? Oh, there she is. For uh, playing flute and singing today. Thank you so much for sharing your musical talents with us today. And finally, I want you to uh, know that you will notice during communion that um, I have asked Pastor Denise Kelts to distribute communion this morning because I'm getting over shingles. Uh, yeah, it's been a fun week. I am completely not contagious, otherwise I would not be here. I am well into the scabby stage. Not the first time people have called me that. <laughs> Let's be clear, crusty and scabby, it's not my first time. So, uh, but just to be on the safe side, I've asked Pastor Denise to distribute communion to you, wearing my mask when we're greeting and leaving and not shaking your hand today, just for your safety and mine, but all is well. So, those are my announcements. Everything else you need to know to follow along with our worship service is printed in your bulletins 
And we begin this morning with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. You are invited to either remain seated or to kneel. <clears throat> Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. And now hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Now I invite you to turn to hymn 532, and I invite you to stand as we sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Benevolent God, you are the source, the guide, and the goal of our lives. Teach us to love what is worth loving, to reject what is offensive to you, and to treasure what is precious in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading for today is from the first and second chapters of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, says the teacher, vanity of vanities, all is vanity. I, the teacher, when king over Israel in Jerusalem, applied my mind to seek and to search out by wisdom all that is done under heaven. It is an unhappy business that God has given to human beings to be busy with. I saw all the deeds that are done under the sun and see, all is vanity and a chasing after wind. I hated all my toil in which I toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to those who come after me, and who knows whether they will be wise or foolish, yet they will be master of all for which I toiled and use my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned and gave my heart up to despair concerning all the toil of my labors under the sun, because sometimes one who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave all to be enjoyed by another who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What do mortals get from all the toil and strain with which they toil under the sun? For all their days are full of pain and the work is a vexation. Even at night their minds do not rest. This also is vanity. The word of the Lord. Please read responsively Psalm 49, beginning with the first verse. Hear this, all you peoples. Give ear, all you who dwell in the world. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. Why should I be afraid in evil days when the wickedness of those at my heels surrounds me? The wickedness of those who put their trust in their own powers and those who put their faith in One can never redeem another or give to God the ransom for another's life. The ransom of life is so great that there will never be enough to pay. In order to live forever and ever and never see the grave, Their graves shall be their homes forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation, though they had named lands after themselves. The second reading for today is from the third chapter of Colossians, beginning with the first verse. Just one second. So if you have been raised with Christ, Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passions, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old selves with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to its image of the Creator. In that renewal, there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. But he said to him, Friend, who set me to be a judge or arbitrator over you? And he said to them, Take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Then he told them a parable. The land of a rich man produced abundantly. And he thought to himself, what should I do, for I have no place to store my crops? Then he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build larger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I will say to my soul, soul, you have ample goods laid up for many years. Relax, eat, drink, be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you, and the things you have prepared, those whose will they be? So it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich toward God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, peace, and mercy be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's gospel begins at verse 13. But I want to read to you what Jesus says immediately before this verse. He says, when they bring you before the synagogues, the rulers and the authorities, do not worry about how you are to defend yourselves or what you are to say. And then suddenly, out of the blue, someone in the crowd shouted to Jesus, teacher, tell my brother to divide the family inheritance with me. Someone has not been paying attention. Someone's mind has been somewhere else. Someone in the crowd is very worried. Worried about money, worried about equity, worried about himself. Jesus' story of the rich and foolish farmer is framed by the statement, do not worry. In Luke's Gospel, Just before the story of the farmer, Jesus told his listeners not to worry about what they should say when they were brought to trial for his sake. Just after the story, he said, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or about your body, what you will wear. And here, in between, he told a story about one of the things we worry most about, money. And we can empathize with Jesus' anonymous listener. We live in a prosperous country. As a matter of fact, we live in a country that is considered one of the most over-consuming countries on the planet. It seems the more money we make, the more we want, and the more we spend. Our wants tend to outpace our income. So when Jesus' listener asked him to command his brother to divide the inheritance, Jesus responded, take care. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed, for one's life does not consist in the abundance of possessions. Face it, whether we like to admit it or not, we humans are greedy. We tend to want more than we need. And there's nothing wrong with wanting and having a nice car or house or clothes, but there is something very wrong when we feel incomplete if we don't have all the things that we would like to have. Yet, our economy is largely based on creating in us the desire for things we don't want. Advertisers base their advertising slogans on our insecurities. Drink this kind of soft drink, use this kind of deodorant, buy this kind of car, it'll make you happy, it'll make you attractive and fulfilled. We delude ourselves into thinking we must have the things we crave and that we can afford them. However, in today's gospel text, Jesus sets us all straight. Jesus tells the parable of the rich farmer, and in that parable he says that 
God told the farmer, this very night your life is being demanded of you. But that's not what the text says in the Greek. If you read this in the Greek, it actually says, they have demanded your life. Who are they? They are his things, of course. He no longer owned his possessions. Instead, they owned him. Somewhere deep inside, we all know that Jesus was stating a powerful truth. Everything we own also owns a little bit of us. If we own a house or a car, then we are under an obligation to earn money to pay for the house or the car. We have to take time to, to see to it that our house or our car is cared for. We are no longer quite as free as we were before. The rich farmer made the mistake of believing that he really possessed his great wealth, although Jesus said the reality was it possessed him. Now, at this point, as your eyes glaze over, I want to stress something. Wealth is not wrong or sinful, but it can be problematic. The spiritual problem of wealth is that it anchors our hearts too firmly in this world rather than in God's kingdom. When our possessions own us, what happens is we lose our focus. We forget what's truly important and valuable in life, and we lose sight of what our true treasures really are. What a blessing God has bestowed upon the rich farmer. Yet the farmer's only solution to his overabundance problem was to build bigger barns to store his blessings. Another solution could have been to give away his extras. He had plenty. His barns were full. But the farmer missed the opportunity and his responsibility to the community around him. He has abundant resources for the community, yet he only thought about himself. How often have we done the very same thing? How often do we spend so much time thinking about what we have and what we don't have and what we wish we had, and all the time we're missing all that we actually do have? For ultimately, I think the real question lurking beneath the surface of this gospel is the question, what do we really need? In a survey, a number of women on welfare were asked what they would do if they won the lottery tomorrow. The person conducting the survey received all kinds of answers. But there was only one answer that he will remember for the rest of his life. When he asked a quiet woman sitting in the corner what she would do if she won a million dollars in the lottery, without hesitating, she responded, I would buy comfortable chairs for us to sit on in the laundromat that I go to. The man couldn't really believe that's all she wanted. And with a patronizing air, he pressed her and said, no, really, what else would you buy? That's all, she replied. That's all we need. That's all we need. This is a woman who sees the miracles of community and the importance of the people around her. She thought not in terms of I or me, but instead she thought in terms of we. We are the body of Christ, the church. We are united through, by, and under the blood of Christ. We are given all we need each and every day. The message of Jesus is that we are blessed to be a blessing instead of storing we are to be sharing. 
What do we really need? We need each other. We need to know that in times of crisis, in times of illness, in times where we are too weak to stand up ourselves, we need to remember we have one another to stand with us. We need to know we have one another to support us, to hold us, cry with us, and remind us that we are never alone. We need to remind each other that we are loved unconditionally by a God who has already given us everything we could possibly want or need. And we need to be reminded of that kind of love each and every day. Folks, our barns are filled to overflowing. And they are not overflowing with money or possessions, but they are overflowing with God's love and God's blessings. The problem with the rich man was not that he had too much grain in too many silos, but that he starved to death spiritually in the midst of God's abundance. Let's throw open the doors of our barns and let the excesses flow into the lives of those we know and even those we don't. Let's remind one another we are each other's treasures. Amen. And now I invite you to turn to him 678, and I invite you to stand as we sing.
And now let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. O oh God, you are the source of all life. Where creation cries out in distress, bring relief and renewal. Bless farmers, ranchers, distributors, and all who provide our food. Nourish the land and all its inhabitants. Be with the places in our country experiencing drought and wildfires. Be with the places in Kentucky that have been devastated by flooding. Bring them the resources, help, and comfort they need to grieve and rebuild. Merciful God. O oh God, you are wisdom. Where nations and communities yearn for peace, bring justice. Strengthen those who toil for the welfare of others, especially military personnel, police first responders, and activists, and for the healing of the nations. We pray for people, for the people of Ukraine, and bring an end to this war and peace to their country. Merciful God. O oh God, you are life. Where your people are overwhelmed with the busyness of life, bring encouragement. Accompany all who experience emotional, mental, or physical distress. We pray especially this day for Sarah, Joyce Brown, Sarah Cummings, Sherry Daddario, Joan Esterly, Mason Fiervanti, Susie Hartag, Carl Kendall, Skip O'Leary, Cameron Pennypacker, Rosemary Reinsel, Betty Rickenbach, Lauren Sullivan, Scott Van Horn, Michael Van Reed, Kristen Widener, Joan Youngerman, and Kathy Zadlow. Renew us at your table of mercy. Merciful God. For our Grace Prayer Family Ministry, we pray for Becky Stone, Madeline Stork, and Linda and Carl Swigert. Merciful God. O oh God, you are our treasure. Where scarcity and anxiety pervade your church, bring abundance and vitality. Guide the work of church councils and committees and give them clarity for the work of ministry in this place. Merciful God. O oh God, you are resurrection. We give you thanks for all your saints. Inspire us by their example of faithful living to set our minds on things above and to be rich in love toward you. Merciful God. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. And now, dear church, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another.
I invite you to stand as you are able. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This is the Lord's table, and God does the inviting, and everyone is welcome to the table. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet.
I invite you all to please stand as you are able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Now I invite you to turn to hymn 705, and we will sing verses 1 through 4 together. neighbor. Thanks be to God.
Thank <laughs> you. 